Good morning everybody. Today we're going to cover electrical boxes. Um, there are hundreds and hundreds of types of boxes for many different scenarios. When you go into Lowe's or Home Depot, um, you know, you, you walk into that electrical section and there are tons of boxes to go through. Um, you know, each box has its own specific purpose in each scenario. So um, you, you got to know what, you, what device you're hooking up and where it is going and then that will help you decide what type of box you need. We're just going to go over the basics today just to give you a good idea of what's out there and get you started. Alright, so we have multiple different types of boxes on here. Let's start with the plastic ones. The plastic ones are for residential use only. They have um, nails that you'll hammer into your stud. That's how you connect them to your stud. These tabs right here, okay, they are used to help the box get flush with the, with the outside surface of the sheetrock. So when you mount your box, and I'll show you this later when we go outside into the shop, um, take note of where your tabs are. That way you mount the box correctly against the stud. Okay. And when you insert when you insert your wire, they will go into the back of these tabs right here. Okay. And you can see that one has been knocked out. So that's a residential box. You also have metal boxes. Metal boxes, they are for residential or commercial or industrial applications. Metal boxes, they have what you call knockouts, and that is how you get your cable connectors or your pipe connectors inside the box. They also have a place for grounding. So your ground screw will attach right there. It's a little bubble that, that way the screw um, doesn't hit the surface material that you're mounting to. So that is where your ground screw goes. These other screws are where you mount, or excuse me, these other holes are where you mount your box um, to the structural material, whether it's a stud or a block wall. Um, these two tabs right here is where you'll screw your device in. If you take notice, this, this box right here does not have the tabs, okay? Um, and we'll talk more about that later, but just know that um, the metal boxes are for residential, commercial, or industrial applications depending on the location, okay? So let's talk about the type of box. So if you were mounting a light fixture, you would need a round box. The round box are for light fixtures only, okay? If you had a device, if you had a receptacle, a switch, uh, GSCI, depending on what it was, um, you would use uh, what they call a device box. You also have in, in residential boxes, you have double gang boxes. And they have two places where you could have uh, two switches, two receptacles, or a quad, um, whatever it may be, maybe a, a 30 amp plug. Also some specialty boxes. This box right here is a fan rated box, okay? This uh, is designed to hold uh, around 80 pounds. So depending on if you were mounting a fan or a chandelier or something like that, you would have to have the correct box to support the weight or the movement of of that uh, or the fan okay this is what they call like an old work or a remodel box these boxes are what you call cut in and I'm gonna show you how to uh, attach these they have these little tabs they have them for residential and commercial so these are, this is a residential cut in box as we call it and this is a commercial cut in box um, they have the knockouts just like the other ones. You can make these into double gang box by taking out these screws right here and attaching them together. Okay, And you'll use, some people call them jiffy clips, some people call them H brackets, but you will use H brackets or jiffy clips, whatever you want to call them, to attach those to the wall. Okay? Some other Some other parts of the box, you have an extension ring. So if you have too many wires in a box, then you would need to add on an extension ring. And they would just fit on the front of your box just like that. 
and that way you can accommodate all those wires. You have what they call a mud ring. So in a, for a metal box, you instead of having, whereas the residential box have the tabs, a commercial box has what you call a mud ring, and that mud ring helps you get flush with the sheetrock. Okay, lastly, mounting hardware. Um, there's all kinds of different mounting hardware. If you're going to a stud, uh, whatever it may be. I just got a few examples right here. This uh, would be for a light box. So if you're mounting it in between uh, you know, two ceiling joists, you could use, um, use this. This is another bracket. Um, depending on the depth of your studs or the depth of your, the depth of your box, you can adjust it by bending these little tabs right here. Okay, so depending on your box depth, you can adjust it with with those tabs. And then finally, okay. And then we also have a uh, another type of bracket uh, that Caddy makes. To use these, they will attach to the double gang box like so. Okay, you'll bring it on the front, and then you'll also attach your mud ring. Okay, so it'll go mud box, and those uh, your, your screws will fit through these tabs. Okay, like so, and then you will attach your mud ring. You have to choose the right box for the correct stud depth. So this is. This is for a two by four stud wall, or three and a half. Um, if it was a two by six, you would need to get the ones made for five and a half. All right, so we're gonna mount a few different types of boxes today. The first one we're gonna mount is a fan rated box. This is on a bracket. Like I talked about before, there are multiple types of brackets depending on if it's gonna be in the wall, or if it's going to be, uh, this would be in between two ceiling joists. So this fan rated box right here, um, it is ideal in any time you are installing a fan rated box to use um, some heavy duty wood screws. This in the field would be out between two ceiling joists. You would mark your two uh, uh, lines at the center points at these notches and uh, you would line it up and then you would install it. These are heavy duty wood screws and that is definitely what you want to use because there would be a lot of movement. Um, you would need four screws total, two on each side. Um, I'm just gonna do two for now. I would need to move this fan box over to get to this other side here. And that, that's your fan rated box right there. Uh, and you can see it's on this bracket and slide. When you're ready to put it where exactly you want it, you can tighten up those two screws right there. All right, the next box you're gonna mount is um, a simple nail on box. Um, like we talked about before, you gotta make sure that those two tabs are sticking out past your wood stud. You're gonna mount these boxes at um, 54 inches, 54 inches is right here. So when you do this, the best way is um, put your put your box on there, all right? Line it up with the bottom. Okay, I like to mark the bottom of these boxes. You have a center line right here, or you can mark a center line. Um, but I usually do the residential boxes. So make sure that the tabs are sticking out past your stud. All right, um, you'll need a hammer. I like to hold it right there, get it set on each side, okay? And then you can finish driving those in. Um, of course, your nail will go all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna try to save this box. So. All right, so the next box is going to be, or the next mounting bracket is gonna be your caddy bracket. You need the caddy bracket, the box, and a mud ring, okay? So what you wanna do first is put it in the correct holes, all right? See how that box is crooked? That one is in the wrong holes. So you need to come up and make sure it is straight. So you mount the box to the bracket first. 
Then you can attach your mud rim, okay? And it's gonna just slide over like so. You'll need a screwdriver and you'll tighten those up. All right, after you get those tight, you can mark your center line. I got mine marked right here, okay? And this little groove right here will fit flush against the stud, okay? Putting your box on there like that. Um, the best screws to use for this one is gonna be a pan head screw. You're gonna mount it, put your center line on there. All right, and I'm gonna have to get in front of the camera just for a minute. All right, and then you can screw in your screw. Okay, um, get that first one screwed in. All the way. All right, um, and then you get your other one. And screw it and make sure that your center line is on there like so and as you can see that box is set in there okay so that's your caddy bracket the last type of box you're going to mount on your stud wall is just a regular device box um, that device box we're going to do what they call a surface mount and surface mount means that it'll just sit flat on the stud so this is your device box, and that surface mount looks just like that right there. So you'll need, um, you can use, you know, 5 16 screws. Um, I got these sheetrock screws handy, so I'm just going to use those. So, a surface mount. And minimum, I would use two screws, um, preferably. Use three, but two to get it done. All right, don't over tighten them. But that's what uh, it's going to look like. We got a fan rated box that would go in a ceiling joist. We got our caddy bracket. Uh, we would have our um, nail on residential box, and then we have a surface mounted device box. All right, so last one, cut in box. You got a residential and a commercial. When you're installing a cut in box, you're gonna need a level. All right, so you get it in there. You'll check for, for plumb, okay? Plumb, ooh, I'm gonna move the box. Mark your lines. After you mark the lines, you can just kind of scribe them across there. Or you can take your level, and make sure they're getting straight, get that level on there. Okay, scribe them across. Uh, when you're doing this, you wanna make sure there's no studs around. So I drill my holes in the first corner. If you do it working in sheetrock, you can just kind of cut in the middle, fill each way. I do it opposite corner. Okay. Um, and like I said, usually it's sheetrock, so you'd have a sheetrock saw. I don't have any sheetrock laying around, so I'm going to use a jigsaw, which, you know, you could have like some bead board, you might be in saw or something. Okay, you cut out the hole, as you can see right here, this box will just fit nice and tight in there. Alright, you'll take a, a screw gun. You'll, or a screwdriver, and you'll tighten up those screws right there, and it'll pull that box against there. If it was a cut-in box uh, for a commercial, um, it would look a little something like that. Um, 